Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Major progress on the Kansas City Streetcar Project. After 18 months of construction in downtown Kansas City, this week workers performed the final weld to the streetcar rails. It happened on Main Street near Union Station and this is a significant milestone as construction gets closer to wrapping up. I'm Tom Guerin, I'm the Executive Director of the Kansas City Streetcar Authority, and I'm out in front of Union Station at the location of the last weld on our 2.2 mile modern streetcar project. It really is a representation of the progress that we've made over the course of the last 18 months. And I, I, when I think about what the last weld means, I really think about these construction workers who've been out uh, in the cold weather, in the hot weather, in the rain and in the snow, uh, providing their skill, but hopefully their dedication and their support on the project over the course of the last year and a half. It's been remarkable to see. They've done great work, and I want to thank them all for the time and the energy that they've invested in our project. My name is Aaron Adams. I'm the construction manager on the downtown Kansas City streetcar project. This is, uh, this is basically the end of track on the job. We still have a little bit of concrete left to pour, but this is, uh, this is one of the final culminations to uh, to the ultimate downtown KC streetcar. So we really want to say a big thank you to the city of Kansas City, to the workers that have put in their hard work over the, uh, over the past year and a half, and uh, most importantly, the, the residents and businesses in downtown Kansas City. The streetcar vehicles will start arriving this fall, followed by months of federally required testing and then riders will be aboard in 2016. City of Kansas City, Missouri's Play It Safe While Driving program was selected as 2014's first place winner for outstanding achievement by the Public Risk Management Association. The campaign was created to increase awareness of the dangers of using a cell phone while driving and to encourage city employees to take a pledge to drive cell phone free. Councilman Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, you know, sometimes we kind of forget about the efforts of our staff to keep all our employees safe unless we're having a tornado drill or a fire drill, but their activities really uh, take place year-round, and I thought it was very appropriate to uh, recognize the uh, Safety and Risk Management Division of the General Services Department for receiving the 2015 Outstanding Achievement Award in the program category from the Public Risk Management Association mm -hmm. for Kansas City's Play It Safe While Driving program, which is designed to encourage our employees to drive cell phone free. And uh, under this program that Eric Hallerud and uh, Kristen Danner and the rest of their staff have put together, uh, they are working to ensure the city employees understand and pledge to avoid distractions while driving in order so for them to make it home safely at the end of the day, but also to make the streets of the city safer for everyone on them, including other motorists, uh, pedestrians, and cyclists. I'm really pleased today to bring my outstanding team up here in front of all of you. Uh, we were very honored to receive this national award from Prima and very surprised to receive it. Our Play It Safe While Driving program actually started a number of years ago. Uh, at that time, my brand new assistant corporate safety manager, Chris and Dan and I, Anna and I were trying to figure out, thank you, we're trying to figure out ways to, how do we motivate people and how do we use the appeal to the head and the heart to get people to voluntarily want to do things that are in everybody's best interest. <coughs> in developing the uh, components of our program, we employed that philosophy. Our goal was to see if we could get people to voluntarily change. Um, we showed them some rather emotional kind of videos about people who lost loved ones with for people who were texting and driving, that kind of thing. Um, we asked them to, to voluntarily choose to change their behavior, to sign a pledge, to dedicate their pledge to someone. Uh, and then for doing that, we gave them an orange bag to put their cell phone in while driving. So far, more than 1,000 city employees have voluntarily pledged to drive cell and text free, and they've each dedicated that pledge to a loved one. It's almost back to school time, and that means Kansas City residents can take advantage of the annual back to school three day sales tax holiday. It's Friday, August 7th through Sunday, August 9th. During this time, shoppers who buy certain items of clothing, shoes, school supplies, and computers in Kansas City, Missouri stores will not have to pay any sales tax. 
Eligible items include clothing costing $100 or less, school supplies up to $50 per purchase, and personal computers up to $3,500. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Carolyn Cadell. I'm here at the 11th Annual International Kansas City Dragon Boat Festival. We have uh, 14 teams competing today on the uh, Brush Creek here on the Country Club Plaza in Kansas City. And uh, up above the creek, we have entertainment, we have dancers, some of them from China who have come especially for this festival. We have Chinese food, Chinese souvenirs, we have activities for children. We have just about everything you would want for a nice family-oriented afternoon here in Kansas City on Brush Creek on the plaza. This is the 11th year for the Dragon Boat Festival, and this is a, a festival that's a, a tradition in China. It actually goes back 2,000 years. It's always on, on the fifth uh, week of the Lunar New Year, fifth month, I'm sorry, of the Lunar New Year. And um, it has, it's a great tradition across China and across the United States, too. So Kansas City is very happy to be part of this particular um, celebration of Chinese culture here in America. We actually have two, two groups of teams. We have community teams uh, and we have college and university teams. So this year we have eight colleges and universities from the Kansas City area who are competing. And then we also have six teams from the community. Community groups like the Ethnic Enrichment Commission, Rotary, different organizations Parks like that. Parks and Recreation. Parks and Recreation. I'm sorry, how could I forget that? <laughs> Dragon Boat Festival. It's dragonboatkc.org. You can also um, just Google Dragon Boats Kansas City. There's also a website, uh, the Chinese Garden Society or the Society for Friendship with China. So all of those will take you to the website that'll tell you about not just this Dragon Boat Festival, but um, next year and um, those that, that we've had in the past. Thank you so much for talking with me today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming. Drug traffickers are hiding methamphetamine and heroin in everything from toys to Tupperware. And Missouri remains a prime location in the U.S. for smugglers bringing drugs from Mexico. Captain Stephanie Price explains how changes in production and trafficking of Mexican meth and heroin affect how the Drug Enforcement Unit of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department is tracking them down. Years and years ago, labs used to be giant production. They used to have all sorts of dangerous chemicals. They used to be in a building would be a whole lab. You could smell it for miles. People used, you know, red phosphorus, ammonium hydrate. They, they used so many things to come up with all this dangerous chemicals to make these drugs. And there was a lots of dangerous byproducts. It was a very dangerous combustible situation for our personnel to go into. Well, then it got down to they had more and more chemists involved and it got down to what was the one pot method, which was basically you made meth in like a soda pot bottle. And they uh, got the, it was small quantities, that's the difference. It went from larger quantities to small user quantities. The trend is not to have one pots or to have giant labs here in the United States. The trend is to bring the methamphetamine across the Mexican border. The folks in the Mexican region or Mexico are producing higher grade methamphetamine at cheaper rates. So all of them. 
in the past year or so, I believe EPIC, which is the El Paso Intelligence Center, which is funded by the DEA, said that in one of their briefs that the transportation of methamphetamine across the border has went up over 200%. Um, I believe meth is prevalent here in the Midwest because, well, for one thing, and again, I was using the DEA briefs, you know, to gain a lot of this knowledge and street knowledge, is because we have a lot of Mexican immigrants, and the DEA points out that they are using those routes that the Mexican immigrants come on um, for drug transportation routes, and so they run right through just the highways, just like the interdiction does. Captain Price says the smugglers of Mexican meth can be difficult to catch because they remain elusive to law enforcement. But drug seizures have increased substantially since the interdiction and metro meth units were combined. While the use of meth is of major concern, the rise of heroin use has deadly consequences. The age group from 18 to 25 year olds is seeing the biggest rise in heroin. It doesn't matter if you're in an urban setting or in a suburban setting. It doesn't matter if you're a soccer mom. If you're hooked on prescription pills, the likelihood that you'll turn to heroin is extreme. In fact, in just the first three months of this year that we've had both our interdiction and our metro meth unit combined, we have seized as much heroin as we did all of last year. So in the first three months, January, February, and March, we have seized the same amount, and that's 65 pounds that we have in all of last year. Don't get me wrong, we still have a meth problem. <laughs> but now we have an emerging heroin problem. You know, in the city of St. Louis proper, they still have a very large clandestine meth lab problem. But they also have a lot of heroin overdose deaths. Um, I believe it was last year they had over 100 heroin overdose deaths. We had 19 attributable heroin overdose deaths. We track all that. You know, that's part of our job is to track not just drug trends, but trends in society. Um, this year we've had four heroin overdose deaths. Um, uh, the news about that is this. In a couple of instances, we were able to actually go back and backtrack and charge the actual dealers with the deaths, heroin overdose deaths of some of our people. Um, it's unacceptable for our society to sell drugs. It's unacceptable as a commander of the drug unit don't kill our citizens with your poisonous drugs. It's time to get rail. Join us on July 29th at 5th Street between Walnut and Main from 5 to 7 p.m. We will unveil the first KC Streetcar Station art installation and we'll have a party called the River Market Rail Rally. There will be food, drinks, and live entertainment. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search for Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.